Well, if you've ever wondered what TTX GP boys do in between race meetings, the answer is that they go to more race meetings. We're down at Brands Hatch in Kent, where the petrol boys are very kindly given a space on the grid to see what an electric bike can do against them. Our rider for this exercise, Richie Welsh on the 48 machine, the ARC EV racing bike. Based on a Suzuki chassis, of course, Richie, one of the most successful riders in the championship, TTX GP. He started riding in March 2001. 22 championships he's contested. He's won five, runner up four times, and third, no less than two occasions. Here's the onboard view. Climb off the grid, up the hill, then it's the sweep down through Paddock Hill. Ben, what a spectacular view. Richie, I think, very much holding his own here. And this exercise proving very interesting for the guys on the petrol bikes. Beforehand, though, we caught up with team principal Brendan Rice. The main aim really was to test the things that we've changed recently and also to start the process of integrating electric bikes with petrol racers. The club were very keen to do it, the ACU were full of behind us as well. It's generated a lot of interest. There's enormous skeptics as there is. People dismiss it straight off. Some people are very interested. Some people see it as the future. I think we've converted a few people this weekend. I mean, we've not been competing bike on bike with the thousands, but that was never the aim. But mm. a lot of people were very surprised at the performance of electric bike. <laughs> Certainly for racing and most modern uh, commuter electric machines, uh, everybody's using lithium-based chemistry. It's been proven now for a you know, whole number of years in consumer goods. There's no more inherent risk in a pack of batteries than what I'd say there is in a, uh, a tank of fuel. The DC motors uh, traditionally have worked on a brushed system, so they have brushes uh, that supply current to the commutator face. AC motors don't have brushes, it uh, all works through magnetic fields and in a non-contact way. For us, our motor is more powerful than last year's motor was. We don't have any brushes to worry about, so it's much lower maintenance, and we think it offers the best trade-off between um, sort of performance and cost. Obviously, motors naturally get hot. Uh, the hotter something gets, the, the less efficient it becomes. So the more that you can cool a motor down, the uh, more current you can pump through it and the greater power output you can get. That's why the, the bikes that are tending to do very well now in the United States are the big water-cooled motors that can run a lot of power. In terms of power delivery, an electric motor makes peak torque at very low RPM or zero. The torque curve of an electric motor is very flat and starts tailing off uh, the higher RPM you get. We have a much higher torque figure than an equivalent petrol engine. I suppose the, the amount of investment you want to put into something is uh, you know, directly related to what you want to get out of it. Our bike cost us around £8,000 to build. Um, when you compare that to buying a race bike uh, to club race in the UK, the costs are very comparable. Its operating costs are a lot lower. The smooth power delivery means that the tyres aren't getting ripped up the same as you can on a on a conventional motorcycle, I imagine a charge, probably for our bike, costs us around 12p. As with anything, it starts off expensive. As people buy into the idea, the price of stuff comes down as the uh, production goes up. It's very similar to, you see the new electric cars, they offer a charge time of 80% charge in 60 minutes and the rest overnight. At the track, we do half and half. We get half of the charge in as fast as we can, or three quarters of the charge and then trickle the rest up nice and slowly so it balances the cells and looks after them nicely. And you can get sort of 90% of a charge into our batteries within four, four and a half hours. You know, we have a common list of questions that we get asked uh, that are basically, how fast does it go? How much power does it produce? How does it accelerate? So our motor uh, produces 110 foot-pounds of torque, which is essentially the same as a 1,000cc production internal combustion bike. It um, does about 130 miles an hour. Um, not to 60 times slightly compromised due to the fixed gearing, but we could gear it to accelerate very fast. Obviously the other big question we get asked is, does it make any noise? Which obviously it doesn't, or very little of. 
after a few race weekends of compa competing, I think we've heard every strange question you could probably think of. Does it charge your phone up? Uh, why don't you put solar power, solar panels all over it? You name it, we've heard it. People, like you say, invest a massive amount of time into building uh, their own race bikes. This is exactly the same. Uh, at the moment, it's perhaps just looks to be a, a little less achievable than it does with a petrol bike because people understand the technology of it less. But um, that's the reason, that, uh, or a purpose for us, I think. We can help sort of um, uh, diffuse uh, the technology and show people that it is achievable, it's not too difficult. Thank <laughs> you.